Have you ever wanted to learn how to make lomi o io but thought you couldn't do it and it's too hard? Well, you're in luck because I'll teach you how. So stick around. Aloha mai kako, my name is Rel and welcome to my kitchen where I like to share all my favorite island and Hawaiian style recipes. And today we'll be making a Hawaiian delicacy, lomi o io. O io or bonefish is a popular fish here in Hawaii. You can also find it in Florida, Bahamas, Puerto Rico and places like that. But here in Hawaii, we make it a little bit different. So hele mai, come along and let's make some lomi o io. First, I'll show you how to clean the fish. I will say, you need a sharp knife to do this. Mine wasn't very sharp. And before you at me, my filleting skills, because the knife was dull, not so great. I know, so you don't need to tell me about it. But the good thing with this fish is, it's okay if you butcher it because you're gonna scrape it out anyway, so it doesn't need to be a nice clean cut. First step is to scale the fish. You wanna run a spoon or a scaler from tail to head to release the scales. Now, I don't know what I was thinking that I could scale this in the sink in my house without making a disaster. So let's take this outside. That's a little bit better. Now you could also use a hose like this on high power on the jet stream and you can get the scales to come off. This or eel was a little bit bigger so the scales were a little bit harder to come off so it didn't work as well. Smaller fish or smaller or eel you can definitely do it like that. So you're going to continue running the spoon over the scales from tail to head to remove all the scales. You want to make sure you get all of it off because you don't want to eat it. And yes, scaling a fish is very messy. As you can see, scales go everywhere. In my hair, on my face, on my chest. It's a mess, but it's fun. Once you're done scaling the fish, go ahead and rinse off your hands on the fish and the board and everywhere else because scales will have flown everywhere. And it'll look like this when it's done. And next we're gonna gut the fish. So the little hole down here at the belly, yes, that's the bottom part. And you're gonna cut through that. But remember I said, take off all the scales. Yeah, I missed some over here. And this is the part where you need a sharp knife because if you don't, it's gonna be difficult to cut and then you're not gonna get a nice clean cut. This fish, not so bad, but other nice fish, you're gonna wanna make sure you got a good knife. And for safety, you don't wanna cut your hands or anything. So go ahead and cut from that hole up towards the head. You want to make a shallow cut all the way up until you hit the head. And then inside that is the gut. So what you're going to do is lift the pectoral fin here and you're going to cut right behind it. And you're going to cut it all the way down to that mid cut line that you did. And then you'll flip the fish over and you'll do it again on the other side next to the other pectoral fin just like this. Sorry, I'm blocking the lighting. I'm totally doing this in my yard and not my normal setup. And then you'll go ahead and cut by the tail, make a vertical incision like this. I kind of jumped the gun before I removed the head and the guts, but that's okay. You're going to make a cut along the top fin like this as well on the dorsal aspect of the fin. And then inside you can see the guts here. So you're just going to twist the head like this. This fish was kind of big and I couldn't do it one handed very well. And then when you twist it and remove it, the guts kind of just come out all in one piece like that. So super easy. You can put that on the side. You can make fish stock with that if you want it totally up to you. You're gonna run, remove all the yucky stuff from the inside and then rinse out the belly like this. Rinse off your whole fish, make sure everything's clean. And you don't want any scales in it. So go ahead and rinse off your board and make sure everything is nice and clean. And now we're gonna fillet the fish. You're gonna finish that cut towards the tail like this and then you're gonna run your knife parallel to the fish along the spine. Now it's much better to hold the tail of the fish and cut through than the meat itself. The pressure from your fingers will indent the meat and make it not look so nice. Um, but my knife was dull so I was having a hard time with that. And then you're gonna wanna cut all the way through up to the spine like this and cut it and then you'll just make one big cut and that's your first fillet. Now the lining of the belly where all the guts was has a lining on it so you'll want to remove that. So you'll take it, your knife and run a thin slit through just to remove that fibrous lining there. You don't want to eat that part, it's not so great. And then you can toss that on the side as well. Then you're just going to do the same thing on the other side again. Run your knife along the spine of the fish like this, cut that piece off, and once you're done, that's the fillet. Remove any excess lining that you don't want to eat. 
uh, like this part here and put that aside. Now back inside at my usual station. So what you're gonna wanna do is run the spoon along the fish like this to kind of spoon out the meat. Best to run the spoon with the direction of the bone. So <laughs> not like I did here and went opposite in some spots. Because what happens is if you're going against the grain and against the bone, you're gonna lift up those pin bones and they can end up coming into the meat and that'll be a lot harder to clean so if you go in with the direction of the bone it's a lot easier to clean so you'll just use the spoon to rub it alongside the fish like this and remove as much meat as you can I'll come back to this piece a little bit later and then you're also going to want to do it to the fillet like this so just hold the end of the fish and just scrape the spoon alongside collect the meat put it in a bowl and then we'll go through that in a little bit and continue until you get as much meat off as you can now in the bowl you want to make sure no bones or scales or anything else ended up in the meat so you'll just go through and check all the meat to make sure everything is clean and no extra parts or pieces are in there don't forget all recipe instructions and ingredients are always listed in the description box below and now that the hard work is done, gather your ingredients and I'll show you how to make lomi o'il. Add the o'il to the bowl and then you're going to want to add some Hawaiian salt as well. Salt to taste, so start with a little and add more later if you need. And then you're going to want to mix it together so that the Hawaiian salt is mixed in with the meat like this. You can use chopstick, fork. Uh, really whatever you want and then you'll add the water now it depends how thick you like this if you like it really thick then you don't really need to add that much water but add a little bit at a time you'll see it kind of start to break up like this but when you continue mixing it'll become a paste consistency like this and it really like I said all depends how thick you want so continue adding a couple of tablespoons at a time mix you'll start to see it separate up again like how it was and then as you continue mixing again it'll start to come back together um, I like to use these metal chopsticks it makes it pretty easy to mix everything together it doesn't break it up too much and it gets it to that nice paste consistency very easy and this is kind of the texture I like it at it'll look like this kind of like really thick Poi. Next, the limu kohu. Limu kohu is a red uh, limu that is very popular in Hawaiian food. We freeze it and so you can grate it from frozen and then you'll take the, that and add it into the mix. Um, I just go ahead and grate it on the finest setting of the grater that I have and then it'll look like this. And then you'll take that and into the o'io you'll add green onions, inamona. Inamona is roasted kukui nut if you don't have you can add macadamia nuts add limu kohu and some hawaiian chili pepper hawaiian chili pepper is really spicy so add as much or as little as you like the seeds make it even hotter so if you don't want it that hot leave those out then you'll just go ahead and mix all of that up until everything is well combined and you've got yourself a hawaiian delicacy lomi o io yum and that's how you make lomi o'io. If you want to check out other Hawaiian cuisine recipes, then watch this playlist here. Or if you'd like to see what YouTube thinks you should watch, then check out this video here. And until next time, ahui ho! Thank you for watching my mom's video.